Welcome to our presentation on parasite specificity. So this module will focus on the parasite specificity in relation to host, species, breed, sex, location within the host, and the geographical location of the parasites. So the study of the parasite specificity is important because it is one of the factors that determines the host range of the parasites. For the outline of this presentation, the first part will be about the introduction to the parasite specificity. The next part will talk about the factors influencing the parasite specificity and the discussion on the parasite specificity in relation to host species, sex, breed, location in the host, and the locality. For the learning objectives, this presentation aims to define what is parasite specificity. It also aims to identify and describe the factors that govern parasite specificity, such as the species, the sex, the breed, the location, and the locality. We also have uh, to discuss the influence of various factors on the host susceptibility or resistance to the parasites. So let's start with the introduction to parasite specificity. How do we define specificity? So specificity in parasitic interactions can be defined by host genotypes that are resistant to only a subset of parasite genotypes and parasite genotypes that are infective on a subset of host genotypes. This is according to Little et al. 2006. This definition is also called as parasite host specificity or host parasite specificity. So the host parasite specificity is a term that indicates the relationship between host and the parasites regarding the degree of susceptibility of the host and the degree of infectivity or powers of infestation of the parasite. For example, man is susceptible to infections or infestations with certain species of protozoa, worms, arthropods, and this degree of susceptibility differs more or less for each species. Moreover, rats are susceptible to certain parasites of the same species and to different species as well. So this figure shows the ova and the oocyst identified from the intestinal content of the black rat, ratus ratus, from the Germanian region. We also have here the, the fleas. So this is an example of a host parasite uh, specificity viewed from the standpoint of the host. The host is the rat and these are the parasites that can infect or that can infest rats. The host parasite specificity when applied to the viewpoint of the parasite would refer to the degree of infectivity or powers of infestations. For example, we have here a parasite, no, a protozoan parasite, Intamoeba histolytica. So Intamoeba histolytica is known to be able to live in man, monkeys, dogs, rats, and cats, but infects certain species of host more readily than others and varies with respect to its pathogenicity in different hosts. Parasite specificity or host specificity, now according to Nitin in 2016, refers to the natural adaptability of a species or groups of parasites to certain species or groups of hosts. And it is said to be dependent upon the compatibility of a host to a parasite. Parasite specificity is usually defined in terms of establishment or failure to establish in a host. 
there are a range of parameters that will give an indication of the degree of adaptation to a host. And this includes the establishment, number, size, developmental stage of the parasite or the worms, duration of infection, level of egg production, and the duration of infection. So we have here the life cycle of the Imeria. Imeria is considered to be a protozoan parasite that is considered to be monocenos, meaning that the cycle occurs in one host. So the Imeria has an absolute or total restriction in terms of its host range because it only infects one host. Now in that case, the in this example, now we have here the poultry, specifically the chickens. Another example of the host specificity is the exemplified now by certain parasites wherein the restriction for their host is considered to be very loose and the parasite can undergo development in and be transmitted between a wide variety of hosts. So this is exemplified by the nematode parasite Trichinella spiralis. So this diagram shows you now the schematic representation of the main sources of infection of Trichinella spiralis as well as its life cycle. So as you can notice here, you know, at a certain point in the life cycle of the nematode parasite Trichinella spiralis, you can see here that uh, different species of animal are being involved in its life cycle. So for example, we have here the, the rodents, the pigs, you know, the bears, the hyenas, as well as humans. And this is responsible for the transmission of the parasite. So this uh, an example you know, of a parasite wherein its life cycle or its development is not only limited to a specific host, but the development of the parasite occurs in different animals, in different animal species. So parasite specificity may be supraspecific, where groups of parasites are associated with groups of hosts, or it can also be infraspecific, where a specific parasite you know, is associated with a specific species of host. Parasite specificity determines the host range of a parasite and accordingly, the parasite may have a narrow or wider host range. Certain parasites such as the Hematopinus suis infest only pigs. Now, that is why they are referred to as the narrow host range. While some, such as the protozoan parasite Trypanosoma cruzi, has a wide host range and in fact many hosts. So we have here a diagram showing the life cycle of Hematopinus suis. So Hematopinus suis is an example of an arthropod parasite exhibiting a narrow host range. It is classified as a narrow host range because it only infests pigs. The other name of Hematopinus suis is the Haglaus, and again it is an arthropod parasite that is uh, sucking lice. Another example of a parasite with a wide host range and in fact many hosts is the Trypanosoma cruzi. Trypanosoma cruzi is a parasitic protozoan that is a causative agent of the Chagas disease or the American trypanosomiasis. When we are going to examine the life cycle of the trypanosoma cruzi, we can see that apart from humans, a number of mammals serve as reservoir hosts for trypanosoma cruzi, including the armadillos, opossums, raccoons, wood rats, some other rodents, and domestic uh, it also includes no, domestic dogs. Another um, 
host of this parasite are the common triatomine vector species for trypanosomiasis belonging to the triatoma rhodneus and the panstrongaeus. So as we can see here you know, in this figure, the parasite, no, trypanosoma cruzi, will not only infect um, a specific type of host, but it has a varied host range. Specificity may vary between larval and the adult stages of the same parasite to host. So, for example, in some, the asexual stages have a wider host range and in fact, a wide variety of intermediate hosts, while the sexual stages infect only one host. So, this uh, type of uh, parasite specificity is exemplified by the protozoan parasite Toxoplasma gundi. Example of a parasite that exhibits variation in specificity based on the developmental stage of um, the parasite is the Toxoplasma gundi. So, Toxoplasma gundi is a protozoan parasite that infects most species of warm blooded animals, including humans, and causes the disease known as toxoplasmosis. When we are going to examine the life cycle of this protozoan parasite, we can see here that the only known definitive host for Toxoplasma gundi are members of the family Felidae, and particularly domestic cats and their relatives. The sexual stages infect only one host, and that is the members of the family Felidae. Meanwhile, the asexual stages of the parasite have a wider host range and infect a wide variety of intermediate hosts. So examples of this are the animals that are bred for human consumption. And we also have here the wild game may also become infected with the tissue cyst after ingestion of the sporulated oocyst in the environment. Moreover, humans can also be infected with the asexual stages of the parasite. In some parasites, as in uh, the genus Imeria, the host specificity is less at the generic level where they infect a wide variety of hosts, but very strong at the individual species level with a very high niche specificity in host. The genus Imeria is widespread in nature with multiple species occurring in virtually every vertebrate host. The genus Imeria are protozoan organisms which invade the intestinal tract, causing coccidiosis, an enteric disease of major economic importance worldwide. Imeria can infect a wide variety of hosts. This diagram shows the oocyst of the Imeria species that can infect cattle, sheep, goats, pigs, and poultry. With a few exceptions, all Imeria species are considered to be host-specific factors that can influence the parasite specificity. These include the host species, the sex, you also have the breed of the host and the location of the parasite in the host. For the parasite specificity in the relation to the host species, most animals are susceptible to some parasites and resistant to the others. For example, majority of the helminths of cattle are incapable of infecting sheep and goats. So the normal resistance of various species of animals to various pathogens is due to the presence of antibodies on their erythrocytes called as isohemagglutinins. Many parasites do not develop in hosts other than their natural host. A good example of this, uh, a good example for this host specificity is 
exemplified by the Imeria species. An example of a parasite with good host specificity is Imeria tenella. Imeria tenella is considered to be a host specific and a tissue specific parasite. It is, it is considered to be a host specific uh, parasite because it has a monocenous life cycle. Um, it has a monocenous life cycle with uh, the only definitive host as chickens. So this parasite is considered to be extremely host specific. It is also tissue specific because it will only infect you know, the epithelial cells of the sacca of domestic chickens. Imeria tenella infection would lead to the acute intestinal disorders responsible for important economic losses in poultry farming worldwide. Another example is the, the nematode parasite, no? the red worms or the strongylus uh, species. This parasite, no, the, the strongylus species, particularly the strongylus pulgaris, are of horses are specific not to equine and they cannot infect cattle, buffalo, sheep, and goats. Let's now proceed to the parasite specificity in relation to the sex of the host. Some parasites affect only the females and not the males. So this is exemplified by the trematode parasite Prostogonimus species. Prostogonimus species is mostly found in the oviduct of the female gallinaceous birds. This diagram shows the adult of the Prostogonimus macrorchis fluke which is no, a genus of the flatworm belonging to the trematodes that has chicken, ducks, turkeys, and other domestic and wild birds as its final host. The influence of sex on helminth burden appears to be largely hormonal. In animals whose estrous cycle is seasonal, Parasites tend to synchronize their development with that of the host. An example of an animal, a domestic animal with a, a seasonal estrous cycle is the ewe. The ewes show a spring rise in fecal egg counts after lambing and onset of lactation. This phenomenon is also known as the periparturian egg rice. So what is periparturian egg rice? So these slides uh, were adopted you know, from the presentation of Susan Skonyan of the University of Maryland Extension. And this slide will explain this uh, phenomenon known as periparturian egg rice, which is associated with uh, the rice in the parasite burden, particularly in use. So this uh, phenomenon is associated with the development or the uh, parasite specificity you know, in relation to the sex. So what is a periparturian egg rise? So this is a temporary loss of the acquired immunity to parasites around the time of lambing or eating. This is associated with an increase in the fecal egg count and adult worm burden. This is caused by hormonal suppression of immunity and nutrition stress around the parturition. This occurs no particularly late in gestation through early lactation. So why is this particular phenomenon important? For use in those milk yield and persistence of lactation can be decreased by 10 to 15 percent in use or dose infected with the parasites. For the offspring, the use in dose deposit more worm eggs into the pasture, resulting in more contaminated pastures which will be grazed by the offspring. 
growing lamps for kids ingest more infective worm larvae, resulting in reduced growth rates and increased mortality. For the strategies for coping with the periparturian egg rise, so this includes the deworming, proper nutrition, season, zero grazing, the feeding of condensed tannins, the administration of the preparation by worma and the genetics. So that is an example of uh, a phenomenon that is associated with the parasite specificity in relation to sex. The next is the parasite specificity in relation to breeds. So different parasites have varied susceptibility to different breeds. So indigenous breeds of cattle, for example, suffer less from tick infestation and tick-borne diseases in comparison to crossbreeds and exotic breeds. The endama and the muturo breeds of cattle in Africa and their crosses are said to be tolerant to trypanosomes. So you have here the illustration of the Indama breed of cattle. We also have here the Motoro breeds of cattle in Africa and the Trypanosomes. So the Trypanosomes or the Trypanosomatidae are considered to be obligate parasitic protozoans which infect all vertebrate classes. So this uh, diagram here is the Trypanosoma vivax in bovine blood smear. We also have the parasite specificity in relation to location of the parasite in the host. So each parasite has a specific predilection site or a location in the host. The best example for site specificity is uh, Imeria species which parasitize only certain areas of the intestine. So this diagram shows the predilection site of the Imeria species that infect Imeria species that infect chickens. So there are nine Imeria species that have been described for chickens, but only five to seven species have been associated with the disease in commercial production. So these species are the Imeria acervolina, Imeria maxima, Imeria tenella, Imeria necatrex, Imeria uh, bronetti, Imeria precox, and the Imeria mitis. So as you can see here in the figure, the Imeria acervolina will infect only the upper intestine of chickens. The Imeria maxima will only infect the middle intestine or the Imeria tenella, so it will only infect the seca. Imeria necatrix has a predilection site for the middle intestine and the Imeria burnetti has a predilection site for the uh, rectum. So this is a myriad species. It's a good example of a protozoan parasite that has a specificity in terms of its location in the host. Other examples include the nematode parasite, the Tectocolor species, which only affect the lungs in ruminants. So we have here the diagram of Dictocalus viviparus, which is also known as the cattle lung worm. So this parasite is a nematode parasite of cattle. We also have the parasite specificity in relation to locality. So when parasites are limited to certain ecological or geographical areas, as in the case of African animal trypanosomes and human trypanosomes that are restricted to Western, Central, and Eastern Africa, it is referred to as ecological or 
geographical restriction.